Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahushai, Barakata Yahawa, Barakata Yahushai, Barakata Yahawa, Barashim Yahushai, Barashim Kakadesh. Double honors and salutations to the elders and apostles of Great Stone, to the Akim Akwath, throughout the four corners of the earth, holding on in sincerity and in truth to this gospel. Of the Lord that Mashiach was shy with uh, diligence of mind is but I'm not sure DC camp another lesson for the hopeful elect in this realm of hypocrisy all right always remember the realm upon the earth we're living in it's a realm of hypocrisy it's a realm of doubts all right it's a realm of temptation and uh, that's the reason why the Lord, Yah gave us the guidebook. You know, give up, give us the uh, the blueprint to handle such uh, inefficiencies in our spirit. All right, inefficiencies with our daily lives. All right, that's why we have the you know the law. All right, we have the laws and the prophecy. You know to help you reflect upon the challenges we're gonna have to deal with all right and the challenges we're dealing with now is nothing new it's exactly what our forefathers had to deal with all right even our, our forefather Moses you know told our people exactly what uh, they are in for all right especially uh, after they were taken delivered out of the land of Egypt, all right, you, you know exactly what happens, you know, so it's a, it's, it's a pain, you know, to struggle, you know, to walk that uh, straight and narrow path, it's not impossible, but remember, hey, it's uh, <laughs> what uh, they usually say, you know, no pain, no gain, so you just have to get yourself uh, aware, let me say acquainted, with uh, what you have to deal with, man. So, if you say you're going to do something and you don't get a chance to do it, don't uh, knock yourself over the head, you know, but you have to put a limit to your excuses. And that's one thing the Lord has always encouraged our people to do. You know, that's what repentance is all about. Put Putting a limit to your excuses, putting a limit to your inefficiencies. And that's uh, how... Uh, you know, you're able to get yourself in the good graces of the Lord. You know, the Lord have mercy upon you. So our forefather Moses mentioned this to our people in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 29. It says, uh, in fact, you know what? Oh, boy. You know, it's, it's heavy. You know, you, if you read it, you know, you see it in verse 27. It says, For I know that rebellion and die stiff neck. Behold, I am yet alive with you this day. Ye have been rebellious against the Lord Yahweh. Bashim al Shai, Bashim al Kakadash. It's like for that. And how much more after my death? Okay. So now we are aware of uh, the atrocities our people have committed, all right? The so-called Negroes, so-called Latinos, so-called Native Americans, the Israelites and the Bible speaks of, all right? So uh, we're not, uh, strain, you know, we're not strangers to the atrocities they've committed, their sinful acts, all right? Their iniquities, all right? Then verse 28 says, uh, Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak these words in their ears and call heaven and earth to record against them. Okay, so this is what the Lord put in the spirit of our forefather Moses to let the, <laughs> the heads of the people know exactly, you know, the issues that uh, bothering him. You know, the issues of the Lord have with our nation, all right? And then verse 29 says, For I know that after my death, for I know after my death, you will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way 
which I have commanded you. And evil will befall you in the latter days, because you will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger, and through the works of your hands. So that's just a, a summary that we have to uh, take note of, right? And uh, you know, it's no surprise, you know, that uh, we're beginning to understand fully why Moses, our forefather Mashah, had a hard time dealing with our people. Yeah, but uh, what can you say, man? You know, the, the Lord, uh, you know, knew that our people had a, a stony heart. And what does it take? <laughs> you know, what does it take for a stony heart? You know, to be uh, converted. You know, that's why. Uh, <laughs> that's why the scriptures is there, man. You know, conversion. You know, to convert that mind from from being hard headed. On being stiff neck to being uh, receptive to the words of the Lord. All right, so that's just something you know you have to uh, consider on a daily basis. You know, Deuteronomy chapter 31 27 to 30. And Moashah and Moshah speak in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. Right, so it's rough, you know, it's rough to see the sad state of our people, you know. So Jake is just falling left and right, man, falling at their own, you know, at their own hands and at the hands of the enemies, too, you know. So it's just the judgment of the Lord, and that it reflects that our people, you know, need to get their act together and, uh, you know, stand upright, man. You know, stand upon the testimony of righteousness. All right? There is no shame in standing up for righteousness. All right? But our people have become so weak that they just give up. You know, they become a, a puppet for crumbs on the master's table. You know, the, the heathen's table. All right. So we read another scripture from the book of Jeremiah chapter 23. I'm going to read verse 9. You know, Jeremiah chapter 23, here it is, verse 9 and 10, it says, Mine heart within me is broken because of the prophets. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man and like a man whom wine had overcome because of the Lord and because of the words of His Holiness. So this one thing you have to deal with, man. You know, you're going to have to struggle with the uh, ad ad adversities that uh, you're going to experience in this ministry. You know, you know, the persecution of the prophet is going to affect you. You know, always remember that, man. And even the, even the downfall of the false prophets too is going to affect you, you know. It's going to cause you to wonder, man. You know, it's going to create some unease in the mind. And, uh, you know, it's just going to stir up that, uh, that mind of concern. You know, it brings back the fear of the Lord. You know, it rekindles the, the fear of the Lord, that fire, that fear of the Lord within you. That fear is fire of the Lord, it rekindles it within you, you know, you start to lose sleep, you know, you start to pray more, you start to fast, even without uh, planning to fast, <laughs> you just uh, go auto mode, man, you know, all my bones shake, I am like a drunken man, and like a man whom wine had overcome, alright, so you lose your balance, man, you know, your balance of thoughts, you know, your balance of thoughts. You can't really get it together, man, because uh, you lose in touch, you lose in touch with, with uh, you know, the proper spirit of discernment. Because of the Lord, 
and because of the words of His holiness. So when the Lord brings heavy judgment upon the people, man, you know, you know, you, you get beside yourself, you know, for quite some time until your spirit settles down, and then uh, you're able to uh, get back on track, man, with uh, your obligations. And then verse 10 says, uh, For the land is full of adulterers, for because of swearing, the land mourneth. All right? Yeah, empty promises, empty oaths. All right? The land mourneth. So that's what's killing our people, man. You know, tiring to serve the Lord, delaying their uh, their willingness, you know, lack of uh, enthusiasm to serve the Lord, lack of enthusiasm to gravitate towards the law, such as in commandments of the Lord. All right. Yeah, see that? Understand? The land is full of adulterers. Right, both physically and uh, spiritually, you know, because our people, man, their eyes in every place, man, their eyes are never settled within the confines of righteousness. All right, and then it says the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. So it's a mess. All right, it's a mess. You know, it's a mess. You know, so the Lord is bringing judgment. You know, it's going to happen, you know, sooner or later. You know, just like our folks on social media, you know, uh, uh, talking about Mr. Take That, Take That, Take That. Yeah, it's about a matter of time, man. The Lord has to uh, tear down, you know, the, uh, the daughters of music, man. The music industry is going down the drain, you know, so... So, you know, these inter entertainers, man, they, their time is up, and uh, the Lord has uh, already closed the book on them, man. You know, so it's time for the prophets, you know, to be uh, revealed. You know, it's the time of the prophets, all right? And then verse 10 says, For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in mine house have I found their wickedness, said the Lord. So the Lord is pissed off, man. You know, those that claim, you know, to uh, serve the Lord, you know, basically uh, mismanaging, you know, the, the proper understanding of the gospel. They're mismanaging the law, statutes, and commandments of the Lord. You know, they're not applying it. They're not reading it the way it's supposed to be read. And uh, they're getting their feelings tied up in the scriptures, man. You know, since the Lord has already said that uh, he, magnified, he magnifies his word above his name, <laughs> what are we supposed to do? You know, you're supposed to magnify the word of the Lord above your own personal interest, man. So the Lord has already set the standard, man. The Lord has already set his word as a standard. So what's so hard, you know? And the Lord has already said it's not the man that he should lie. You know, so he's, he's not a hypocrite. So why should our people, you know, glory in their hypocrisy, man? Give a reason, for, you know, give an excuse to be hypocrites. It doesn't, it doesn't help. So uh, now we go to the book of uh, Ecclesiastes, man. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. It just... Uh, it helps a little bit to understand uh, the situation our forefather Moses found himself in, man. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 13 to, uh, to 16. It says, uh, This wisdom have I seen, under, seen also under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. There was a little city, all right, just liken that to uh, to our nation, the nation of Israel. All right, at the beginnings. All right, there was a little city, and few men within it. You know, and there came a great king against it and besieged it, and built bulwarks against it, 
Now, there was found in it a poor wise man. All right, just uh, put that as a uh, forefather Moses. All right, and uh, he by his wisdom delivered the city, yet no man remembered the same poor man. All right. So it's just one of those things in these days and times we have to deal with, man. You know, our people rarely talk about uh, our forefather Moses, as far you know his influence upon our people. You know, and uh, how they should be living up to his legacy of uh, having the courage, you know, to abandon uh, the the worthlessness of this world and to seek the welfare of his own people the Israelites all right so it's something man that we have to uh, deal with man you know the, the legacies of the, of the man of the Lord is something that we all have to uh, remember all right and then uh, verse 16 says then said I wisdom is better than strength Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. Right, so that's why, you know, our forefather Moses said that man after his death, our people will become much more unruly. You know, they're gonna multiply wickedness within within their borders. You know, scripture talks about our people becoming more wicked than the wicked. So that's just evidence, man. You know, that's just evidence. And uh, yeah, so the, this gospel, man, it's not for everyone. You know, as uh, you read further into the, the scriptures, you know, the different books, it's only for the the hopeful elect, man. You know, and a few men within it. See that? There was a little city and a few men within it. All right. So that's just how this this gospel is, man. This ministry, you know, it's not about uh, everyone in the in the nation, man. It's about the, the chosen few, all right, that the Lord has uh, set aside for Himself for His great wonders, all right. So uh, it's only a matter of time, man, that uh, the Lord will uh, reveal what He has in store before that. Uh, great and dreadful day all right so we go to the book of ezekiel chapter 33 i'm going to read uh, verse 32 and uh, let's see what uh, it says and lo thou at unto them as a very lovely song of one that had a pleasant voice and that's why you know the, the, our people are so engulfed with that spirit of entertainment man that spirit of uh, theater you know our people like to act you know they like to play play the roles of uh, spectators man they like the oohs and the ahs man you know they, they like to be in the audience you know, in that so-called uh, popcorn and soda mentality, man, they just want to be entertained. You know, they want to have front row seats to the entertainment. They want to be famous, you know, for being entertainers, man. You know, the the Lord is not looking for uh for for entertainers, man. Just like the Apostle Gabar always <laughs> saying, man, <laughs> the Lord is looking for uh. Well, you know, for a, an artist, a rapper, he's going to have the best of the best. <laughs> but in this case, the Lord is not looking for that, man. You know, you know, this, this, the Lord is not pleased with this uh, theater art stuff, man. You know, he's just closing the curtains on them. All right, that's why you have this, uh, you know, these writers, you know, Writers and artists, man, they, they're on strike. You know, they've been on strike. You know, they're not pleased with the way the so-called uh, big shots are pulling the plugs, you know, running the show. Yeah, so it's it's one of those things that uh, 
you, you're going to have to witness, man, the downfall of the so-called uh, entertainment industry. All right, it's not just music, but also movies too. You know, the, the minds of the people is gravitating towards uh, their own little circles, man. All right, the Lord is drawing their minds away from uh, from these uh, conglomerates. All right, so the conglomerates have to fight hard to pull the people back. Okay, so uh, are you going to time? Ezekiel 33 and 32, and lo that unto them as a lovely song of one that had a pleasant voice and can play an instrument. All right, so our people understand the value of the words of the Lord, but uh, they choose not to uh, put it into action, man. For they hear their words, but they do them not. Okay, and then verse 33 says, And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that the prophet had been among them. Okay, so it's just one of those uh, moments that uh, our people who have to uh, take account of, man, that uh, they had the words of the Lord right at their fingertips, but they chose not to. Uh, Put it into its proper use, man. You know, it's one thing to say, "Oh, you, you believe in the word of the Lord," but uh, the actions have to follow, all right. And that's one thing that uh, we all have to uh, remember, man. You know, it's, it's a struggle, you know, to uh, stand up against the old man. Our people are just fighting; they're fighting against the spirit instead of going with the spirit, <laughs> you know. And the men of the Lord are fighting against the flesh. <laughs> So, that's just what it is, man. One group of our people fighting against the spirit. One group of, within our, of our people is fighting against the flesh. So, it just shows you, man, that conflict, man. The conflict, you know, it's, uh, it's no joke, man. You know, if, you, if you're a man of the Lord, you trust in the Lord of Mashiach, you, shy, you know, you have to be on your P's and Q's to make sure that uh, your flesh, man, doesn't uh, pull you apart, man. You know, you don't want to be a part of the reservoir dogs, all right? So now we go to the book of uh, book of Tobit. Yeah, the book of Tobit, chapter 3. All right, verses 3 and 4. It says what? Remember me and look on me. Punish me not for my sins and my ignorances. And the sins of my fathers who have sinned before thee. Yeah, so that's why we pray. That's why we always have to, you know, make uh, clear our supplications unto the Lord, man. You know, it's the reason why you, you have to fear the Lord, man, so that uh, our iniquities do not uh, overwhelm us, man. You know, that the Lord doesn't bring. Uh, damnation upon our household because of the sins you know just like uh you know you know jake man that uh that messed up Achan, you know that uh found a babylonian garment man what type of garment it was man and his whole household got uh got the boot you know so you just gotta be prayerful man that uh, you don't uh, fall short of the mercies of the Lord all right so verse 4 says uh, for they obeyed not thy commandments wherefore thou hast delivered us for a spoil and unto captivity and unto death and for a proverb of reproach to all the nations among whom we are dispersed yep so that's the judgment, man. You know, that's the judgment that the Lord had to uh, bring upon us so that we can be chastening and uh, we return unto Him. You know, some people, some, so many of our people have become uh, a victim of their own uh, weakness, man. You know, they've uh, become, in, they've become uh, what you call... Uh, 
experts in, Stock in Stockholm Syndrome, man. You know, experts in Stockholm Syndrome. You know, they, they enjoy being a, being a puppet for the rest of their life, man. You know, they want to they wanna admire, they want to hold on to the ideals of their uh, oppressor. And the Lord is making it clear to them that uh, it's time to let go of the hands of thy oppressor. It's time to move on, man. It's time to uh, grow up and mature, you know, and uh, leave that folly behind, you know. Leave the folly behind, you know, leave the, 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 the world behind, just like the movie. <laughs> yeah, leave the world behind, man. You know, we know that we've been through captivity. You know, we've been uh, bamboozled. Our people are just uh, destroyed, man. Destroyed for lack of knowledge that uh, they're supposed to be applying to uh, heal themselves, man. You know, you don't have to go to them physically and lay hands on them or anoint them to heal them. The, the words are there. The, the, the scriptures are there. You know, they can... Uh, Turn on the computer, turn on their cell phone, and uh, start to search. You know, I want to come across the, the you know the words of the Lord, preached by the servants of the Lord Amashaki Awashai, Bashim Kadesh. That's that's the key. That's that's what they need, man. All right. So that's how our people can uh, begin to heal themselves, man, from all the reproach, man. You know, the worst thing, you know. That can happen to a people is just be a reproach, man. And once uh, that happens, man, folks just cave in, man. It's like an attack on your confidence. All right? You know, you do your best. You work so hard and, and, and still yet, you're still being looked down upon. But today, that's just what, what a lot said, man. You know, if you're being looked down upon, don't uh, let that make your confidence fade away. You're supposed to raise your head up. Just like <clears throat> it's like the Lord Hamash, like Yahweh Shai mentioned, man, you know, lift up your head for your salvation, draw it nigh. So it's just what it is. You know, it's just what it is, man. You know, you have to remember, man, that uh, you can't go on, you know, being a puppet, man, a puppet for the flesh, a puppet for the oppressor. You know, you have to uh, gravitate towards righteousness. Now we read from the book of Baruch. Baruch chapter 2 and uh, verse 30. And what does it say? For I knew that they would not hear me because it's a, it is a stiff-necked people. Right? That's what our people, man, are all about. They enjoy being stiff-necked, man, no matter how hard. You know, the, the prophets tried, man. Our people will always seek a reason to uh, turn against the prophets, man. You know, ridicule and murder and all that stuff, man. Sabotaging the efforts of the prophets, man. You know, so what do you expect to happen? You know, what do you expect the Lord to do? The Lord has to avenge, you know, the, the persecution of, of his prophets, on our people, you know, <laughs> and that's one thing, you know, we haven't really talked much about, man, you know, the, the, the vengeance of the Lord, man, is going gonna, gonna to come against those that have, uh, you know, done harm to uh, the body of the Lord, okay, but in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves, who's going to remember themselves, they're like, that's just what it is, man. You know, they're going to remember themselves and hold on to that precious memory, man. The precious words of righteousness. All right. And that's just what it is. And shall know that I am the Lord, the power of their power, for I will give them an heart and ears to hear. That's a perfect gift they can always pray for, to have, man. You know, that pretty our people have an heart and ears to hear. That's just what it is, man. 
once you have this, man, you know, your life is, <laughs> your life is golden. That's what we need, man. You know, we need that mindset that, uh, of uh, being able to be receptive towards the words of wisdom that the Lord has given unto us, man. Because uh, you can't live without the words of the Lord, man. You can't, man. You can't uh, make any substantial uh, progress in the face of adversity without having the everlasting words of righteousness. Okay? Now Isaiah 33 and uh, 14 says, the sinners, of, the sinners in Zion are afraid. <laughs> Fearfulness had surprised the hypocrites. Why? It says, who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? So the judgment is revealing itself, man. Are people getting uh, and getting a dose, man, about the Lord's judgments, man, because they see now that the Lord is make, making his moves. Folks are scared. You know, folks are, <laughs> are sitting up, man. They see the, the demise in Babylon. They see the demise of the economy. They see the the agenda of the elites, man. You know, and they, they're beginning to uh, speak among themselves and making lessons about it. You know, different news articles coming out. So our people are beginning to be uh, aware about uh, <laughs> the chaos that the Lord is about to bring, man. All right. Mm -hmm. And then it says, who, am, who among us shall dwell with the everlasting burnings, man? You know, phew, that's a tough one, man. Who's going to be able to uh, deal with the persecutions, man, with the chaos, the judgment that the Lord is bringing upon the face of the earth? All right, then verse uh, 15 says, He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, he that despiseth the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. Yeah, so that's a that's, uh, uh, a good summary man of what we're supposed to be about if you decide that uh, you want to be delivered from this chaos man you, you want your faith to be ironclad these are the things man you have to be uh, up for man you're gonna have to be tested <laughs> these are not just attributes that you're just gonna you're just gonna have just like that you're gonna be tested you know, you're going to be put among God, you know, in, in the circle of oppressors, man. You know, and you have to make a choice. Are you going to go along with the program or uh, excuse yourself from it, man? You know, are you going to uh, look the other way, <laughs> you know, to take a bribe, to take that uh, bag of, uh, of lucre, of filter lucre, man, you know? And this is what it is, man. And uh, it's it you know, it's that stop at his ears from hearing of blood, you know, the assassination of people's character and all that stuff, man. So you, you just have to understand, man, what uh, you, you, you're here for, man. You know, you have to be uh, aware of what the Lord requires of you. Then verse 16 says, He shall dwell on high. All right, you're going to be safe from the from the <laughs> from the millstones the Lord about to rain upon the earth, man. His place of defense shall be the munition of rocks. Bread shall be given him, his waters shall be sure. So we pray that the Lord elevates us above uh, the adversities that's coming upon the face of the earth, man. You know, you pray. That uh, your witness on high is acknowledged by the Lord Hamashak Yahushai. And that uh, when you call for help, you know, the Lord will always uh, provide a way for you to be delivered. So we get another scripture, Isaiah chapter 9. I'll try one more time, see how this goes. Isaiah chapter 9 and uh, verse 17. And what does it say? 
It says, therefore, the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and widows, man. You know, so when the Lord is bringing this chaos upon the earth, man, you know, our people are going to get it the worst. You know, that's just what happens, man. The people at the bottom get it the worst. Because <laughs> our people don't own nothing, man. Don't own nothing. Whatever they are, man, they don't own anything. Man. They are at the bottom of the totem pole, man. They don't have the power structure to sustain their uh, their existence, man. You know, they are the mercy of the oppressors. <laughs> yeah, so that's why you read Isaiah 9 and 17. Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and widows that describes our people to a T man. For everyone is an hypocrite and an evildoer, and every mouth speaketh folly. See? That's why, you know, the the prophets had a hard time dealing with our people, man. And when the the prophets can no longer deal with the people, the Lord has to bring his judgment. You know, the Lord has to bring his judgment, you know, upon the young men, upon the, the fatherless and the widows, you know, upon the evildoers of our people. So you understand, you know, what uh, happens, man. You know, when the Lord judges, <laughs> judges our people, man, you know, you you have that uh, that bitterness, man. You know, because you care for, you know, we care for our people, but it's just that uh, you just have to deal with it, man. You know, I told him, I mean, I told him, man, I told, I warned him, man, this guy, you know, this woman, man, she, you know, she stopped by the camp, man. We told her all that stuff, man. We told her, man, you know, all that stuff, but what did she go, what is she going to do? All that stuff, man. You know, it, it plays back in your mind, right? For all this. His anger is not turned away. But his hand is stretched out still. So this is just a chastening of the Lord. You know, we have that uh, opening of mercy. That's why the Lord Amashaki Abishai is present with us. So we have to acknowledge the offer that's on the table. The words of wisdom that are on the on the table for us to uh, accept and acknowledge, man. All right. So, uh, yeah, I get some more scriptures, man. Let's uh, let me see if we can find another one. Ezekiel chapter 33. Let's see. It's my favorite. I'll read that one more time. And lo, thou art all to them as a very lovely song that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. Yeah, so that's what happens, man. That's what happens. This is what... Uh, plays continually in the minds of the prophets man you know you put in so much work but then uh, the people do not uh, accept it and then they expect the lord to bless them and have mercy upon them in the midst of the horrible judgment that's coming upon the face of the earth you know yeah so it's just what it is you know it's just what it is so uh i'll wrap this up quick man so just to get the book of joel joel chapter 2 let's see verse uh, 13. you know what let's see all right verse 12. this is what it says therefore also now say the lord turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. Okay, so that's just what it is. It's what the Lord expects for us to be about, man. To uh, 
understand the gravity of our situation, man. And uh, do whatever it takes, man. Do whatever it takes. You know, you have to be spiritually conditioned to serve the Lord, to trust in the Lord, man. All right? So your conditioning, man, has to happen. All right? So you have the fasting, the weeping, and the mourning, man. You know, these are... These are uh, part of what uh, the men of the Lord have to deal with, man. Fasting, weeping, and mourning. You know, the sign and crying for the abomination done in the midst of our people. You know, all that stuff, man. The oppression that uh, the prophets have to uh, constantly uh, deal with. But yeah, so, yeah, it's part of the conditioning, man, you know. The fasting, the weeping, and the mourning. Okay, so uh, yeah, we're constantly praying, man, for the Lord to uh, spiritually prepare us, man, to uh, return unto Him. All right. Now it says, uh, verse thirteen, and rend your heart and not your garments, man. So the Lord's not concerned about, uh, you know, uh, you know, all these. Uh, Show and tell, man. The Lord wants you to be sincere. And rend your heart and not your garments. And turn unto the Lord, the Haba, Shema, Shai, thy power. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. And repented him of the evil. Okay. Yeah, so... That's what the Lord said, man. Great evil is going to bring upon our people so that they will not be able to remove their necks. So, uh, it's just what it is, man. You know, the curses, the judgment, the admonishments of the Lord is just part of the process, man. That uh, the, the the prophets, the servants of the Lord, the Mashiach, the Ashai, the Bashim, Kakadash, they have to go through the fire, man. <laughs> Only the elect are willing to go to that fire. You know, they understand that uh, they have to go through the ridicule, the oppression, man. You know, you have to go through the through, through that uh, course. Yeah, but uh, two thirds don't want to go through it, man. They don't even want to complete uh, the course. You know, they don't want to complete the journey, man. You know, they just give up. You know, they just give up and, you know, throw in the towel. So, it's just part of the necessary uh, words of uh, wisdom we have to be aware of, man. Now, uh, verse 14, all right. Even in continuation in 13, you know, you just got to trust in the Lord, man, that uh, he will deliver you at the end of... Uh, your trials, man. You know, that's really what counts. The, the deliverance. The deliverance after your trial has ended, man. You can't just keep on having trial and trial and trial and trial and trials without deliverance. So uh, that's what it is, man. That will be the final sealing of the deal. All right. Now, verse 14 says, Who know it if he will return and repent? And leave a blessing behind him. Alright. So that's what uh, we're looking for from the Lord, man. A blessing, man. You know, we're looking for that uh, salvation. You know. Even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord. Bashim uh, Bashim Kodash. Why? Your power. Yeah. That's just how it is, man. You know, that's what we concern ourselves about. You know, that the Lord will look down from his throne and uh, have mercy upon us, you know, because, uh, you know, this uh, hypocrisy stuff, man, it's no joke, man. You know, it's a constant struggle that every Israelite had to deal with, man, you know. So, you know, you just got to be prayerful, man. Be prayerful that you don't uh, get uh, swallowed up. I don't want to sound like uh, <laughs> Mr. Potter's house <laughs> by uh, this world of filthiness, man. The world of uh, 
of hypocrisy, man. You know, that's that's a bad vibration, you know, to uh, to depend on, to be uh, constantly uh, entangled with, man. Yeah, so you, you got to be a prayerful man, you know. You got to pray consistently that the Lord doesn't allow you to be swept away by the by this flood of lies, man, you know, flood of false doctrines, doctrines, flood of falsehoods, man, because our people enjoy swimming in, the, in their vomit, man, you know, swimming in a pool of vomit, that's not the way, you know, to live, all right, so that was the point that I came, uh, Barat Azar, you've been edified, man, you know, always remember, man, you have to fight against hypocrisy, man, that's one thing. That's a struggle. Our uh, people, man, they, they like the appearance of things, but they don't want to, to have that foundation, man. You know, so that Kahlai Malai Habashim Shai Bashim Kakadash, the one of the apostles and the bishops and the elders of Great Stone, the to then Shalom.